what is a parliament? Whether you're like me and live in the United States and have no idea what a parliament is, or you live somewhere that has a parliament and want to learn more, you're in the right place. But before we begin, I want to thank you for watching Ben Explains with your host, Ben. If you like this video and want to see more, click that subscribe button down below. Now let's jump in. There are a lot of countries that have some sort of parliamentary system. In fact, there are 104 countries that use a parliament. Some of these countries include Canada, Japan, New Zealand, Nigeria, and Australia. In a parliament, the legislative branch takes over most of the power from the executive branch, while the judiciary branch usually remains separate. So in a parliament, most of the power lies within the legislative branch. And it can be either unicameral, where there is only one branch of legislature, which is usually only implemented in small countries, or it can be bicameral, meaning two chambers. And this is much more popular. There is a lower chamber, usually referred to as the House of Representatives or the House of Commons, elected to represent a portion of the population they are elected from. There is also an upper chamber, often referred to as the Senate or the House of Lords, which can be voted on by the citizens or nominated by the government. Usually most of the power lies within the lower chamber, but some governments try to have equal power between the two chambers. For the rest of this video, we will be talking about the lower chamber. Many parliaments have multi-party systems, meaning there are more than two parties being represented in the parliament. And the party with the majority gets to select amongst itself the prime minister who oversees his cabinet and is the leader of the party. The prime minister and his cabinet form the executive branch, but has far less power than a president would. Laws are passed by a majority in the parliament and signed off by the executive branch. But the executive branch has little to no veto power. The prime minister has no set term limit and serves as long as the legislative branch has confidence in them. But if support waivers, a vote of no confidence can be issued, and if the vote gets a majority, the executive branch gets kicked out of power and a new election follows in the legislative branch, and a new prime minister will be nominated after the vote. There are eight types of parliamentary systems, and we will briefly explain each one. First, there is a parliamentary republic, where there is a prime minister appointed by a legislative branch and a president voted directly by the people, who usually oversees foreign affairs. Next, there is a parliamentary democracy, where voters choose representatives in regular elections. Moving on, there are federal parliamentary democracies where the party with the majority controls the government. Next, there are self-governing parliamentary democracies where the government is only a colony of another country. There are parliamentary constitutional monarchies where there is a monarch which only has ceremonial power. Like a parliamentary constitutional monarchy, there are federal parliamentary constitutional monarchies, but the monarch actually has power and serves as the head of state. There's only one case of this in the world, and that is in Malaysia. And finally, there are parliamentary democratic democracies. These are for territories where the head of state of another country appoints a governor to serve as an executive branch in the territory. Having a parliamentary system has its benefits. In a parliament, people elect their representatives based on the party and not the individual. Representatives of a certain party are expected to agree on most issues. So when a party is in power, it can get things done much quicker as there is no real check and balance system between the executive and the legislative branches. While minority parties are expected to challenge the majority party, they don't have any real power to stop them passing laws. So the party in power can pass the laws they wish without any real trouble, giving them full accountability. So if they pass a law with negative repercussions, a vote of no confidence can be called and power can change until the next party messes up bad enough for a vote of no confidence. And the cycle continues. Thanks for watching Ben Explains. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, comment them down below. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, click the subscribe button down below.